We are uh, together tonight to record a short video for so many people that phone us up um, looking for advice about how to how to, to handle their loved ones who have hoarding issues. So Joe and I thought we would try to share some of our knowledge um, so that we can send you something that you might be able to watch a couple of times. So my name's Heather Matwatso and I am founder and CEO of Clouds End CIC. And, and I'm Joe Cook. I'm one of the directors of Hoarding Disorders UK CIC and uh, really pleased to be here with Heather this evening. Um, CICs, for those who don't know, are a type of social enterprise, which is a bit like a charity, but not as strict, um, but it's still a not-for-profit. So I think the first thing to do, I mean, I'm sure you've done some research and you've done some learning about why your loved one has hoarding behaviour, but it's you might not have realised that you need to understand your reaction to it too, because hoarded homes have an effect on people. Um, they have an effect on Joe and I. We have no power over that, but we know that it's going to affect us. And so we, we're we sort of aware that that might alter how we talk to people. But if you don't know that, that's the first thing to understand. A hoarded home to your um, nervous system is very, very dangerous. And so it will put you into a state of fight or flight or panic or anxiety. So bear this in mind. It's it's not real. It's just your your guardian that's trying to keep you safe. Um, but if you're aware of that, then sort of take a few deep breaths and, and you'll sort of reassure yourself that it isn't as bad as it is. Um, but this also sets up the idea in your head that you need to solve or resolve or clear. And that isn't going to help. So the other side of this coin is why, why is your loved one experiencing the need to hold on to things? And it's the same mechanism, but it's serving the opposite purpose. So what they are holding on to is keeping them safe in a subconscious way. And if you attempt to take it away, it will make them feel unsafe. And But they're not aware of this. It's not like they'll go oh, listen, when you try and clear those newspapers, it makes me feel really anxious. And then I just feel um, as though the world is a really unsafe place. They won't know that. It's just a reaction. So it makes them emotional as going to their house makes you emotional. I'm going to pass over to Joe to suggest a few things that you might bear in mind yeah. when you go that just make things easier for both of you. Because as soon as you have sort of trust and your loved one is at ease with you um, and you are being the relative that you are. You're being the daughter, you're being the sister, you're being the son, you're being the brother, you're being whoever you are in relation to that person. That's your first job. So that's what you've got to bear in mind. Be a yeah. good sister, be a good daughter. Yeah. Do that to the nth degree because you know how to do that. Yeah, definitely. And yes, we say, you know, protect your relationship with your loved one as that daughter, as that mother because I think we, we so often get so many calls about, I think it's our natural reaction is to go into, as Heather said, in, into solution mode and project management when, you know, I think sometimes the, the shift to want to fix it means that those roles can be reversed, which isn't necessarily helpful. So protect that relationship of who you are. And also to understand that the, you know, to separate the behavior from the person you know you might you might love that person but you might not like their behavior and I think to to separate that up can be particularly helpful and, and I think understanding that that hoard is what's that keeping that person safe is making them feel um, you know take that hoard away you're taking away their sense of safety they might not recognize that that's that's what it is but that's their security blanket their emotional insulation um, so I think having an awareness of, of perhaps some of the reasons why someone might be hoarding and an and understanding what your, how you can help. And I think separating out intervention from interference, understanding that there is no point being confrontational, um, that will get you nowhere. 
I think we, we heard from one of the, I think from Michael Tompkins from, from digging out, I think he said, you know, there is no point arguing with someone with hoarding behaviours. You, you can make that your life mission to go into project management, just get rid of it, for God's sake, that is not helpful. Um, and I think having an awareness of that, and, and I think, you know, you have to have a lot of patience and understand that that person needs to trust you. They, they, need to, they need to know that they're not being judged by you. They need to know that you're not coming from the point of view of clearance. Um, because I think clearance in, in the hoarding world is, is a huge swear word for some people. And, you know, that feeling of threat is huge. It is, but, it, but take heart. You know, there mm. are lots of success stories, but there are yeah. always success stories where things have gone really slowly, especially at the beginning. And when you get somebody working with you rather than you working against each other, then you do get smooth, but it's slow progress. And it should be because if that, that the work that you do with them needs to reassure them that it's okay. So you'll be going, right, we could get this whole room cleared today. Whereas if you say, how about I just take a few newspapers and just pop them in your recycle bin and let's see how that feels. That's the same path, but it's just a bit slow. Absolutely. You need to work at a pace that's suitable for them. You might be itching to sort it all out. That's, that's, that's you know, that, that's a, a natural reaction to it. It's like, no, you know, if, if, if we want change to be sustainable, it's people getting used to the incremental stages of, OK, this feels OK, you know, bit by bit, step by step. You know, really work at, in baby steps. Um, I, I think that's that's really important because we're we're not doing it for them; we're doing it with them. You know, we're empowering people to make decisions about for themselves. It's not our decisions. And understanding, we talk about understanding. What does this mean to you? you know, being curious about things because one person's idea of what's treasure might be someone's idea of of rubbish. And talking of which. Rubbish is, a, is another swear word in the hoarding world. And, and we talk about language. And I think language is so important when you're working with people with hoarding behaviours. You know, yeah, it's that just be, choosing, choosing yeah. a nicer word, isn't it? Instead of going, whoa, this, just get rid of all this crap. Then yeah. say, if we could make a little space by your chair, you could put a table there and then you can put your bottle of Baileys on it. Whatever, I don't know. That's right. But it's just a nicer way of the... There's always many ways to say something. Just have a thought about how you can say it a bit gentler. Yeah. Um, because in the long run, stuff is just stuff. Mm. And if mm. you lose a relationship because of that, it really is a, a, such a shame. You know, it happens, but it is, it's always such a shame. Mm. So um, treasure, as, 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 as Joe said, protect your relationships um, mm. because they are precious and good. And, mm. and, it's so difficult because this is the only mental health issue that you can see and but everybody just looks at that whereas if you're you had a loved one who had depression you wouldn't go oh just get rid of it by the end of next week otherwise we're going to fall out you really wouldn't say that would you you wouldn't think that but if you can maybe put that in your head anything that helps you get your mindset right means that you, both you and them are going to feel good about what you're doing. And if that's OK, then do it, you know, then do it. So I had somebody call me a, a few years ago now and they said that their sister had hoarding behaviour, but has just written a book called Understanding Hoarding. Nice idea. If you bought two of those books, because his sister was talking to him, and, but she just couldn't do it. And they lived apart uh, to sort of have regular visits. And I said, why don't you buy two copies of the book, one for her, one for you, and you can just use that as a discussion point. What did you think of chapter one? Did you read anything that... And that way, you're both on the same, literally on the same page, but you're learning things, both of you, and you've got a sort of place of common ground where you can um, discuss things without having done anything, you know, rolling your sleeves up or anything like that. And, and that, was a, that was a really successful strategy because it just put them both in the same place. No, thanks for that. I think, yeah, that's true. And I think meeting away from the home, that the focus isn't always on the hoard. I think that's really important that, again, why you're protecting that relationship, that you, you have meetings away from the home 
and that you know that 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 you stop making it your lifelong project um because i think it's really important to 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 not just focus on that as, as a ever ending before and after because you might not ever reach that after that you want but it's understanding what are the best outcomes for your loved one not the outcomes that you want recognizing that perhaps we're not aiming for house beautiful you know we have to understand you know everybody has the right to live in the way that they want it might not be the way that you want to live but we always come from the point of view of safety you know of harm reduction of understanding what are the implications of this person's hoard having on them or what are the implications of their of their collections and i think when we look at hoarding and we look at collections it's like when it you know what does intervention look like it, it, it's when 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 the stuff negatively impacts on that person and i think it's looking at the negative bits and i think that's really important to keep that in focus um, because i think recognizing our own stress tolerances to to a hoarded home is is really important as well so we can talk about this forever joe and i because um, I that's what we do but we hope that this has given you a little bit of insight um and good luck with your relationships with your with your loved ones really because as, as we said those are the most important things and um we hope that we've lifted a little lid and uh, given you a little bit of help.